Uh, to the people of India watching and listening across this vast nation, I bring the friendship and the greetings of the American people. It has been a great honor to be the first American president to join you for Republic Day. Uh, with the tricolor waving above us, we celebrated the strength of your constitution. We paid tribute to India's fallen heroes. On a more personal level, India represents an intersection of two men who've always inspired me. When Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was protesting racial segregation in the United States, he said that his guiding light was Mahatma Gandhi. When Dr. King came to India, he said that being here in Gandhi's land reaffirmed his conviction that in the struggle for justice and human dignity, the most potent weapon of all is nonviolent resistance. And those two great souls are why we can gather here today. And there's another link that binds us. More than 100 years ago, America welcomed a son of India, Swami Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda helped bring Hinduism and yoga to our country. And he came to my hometown of Chicago. And there, at a great gathering of religious leaders, he spoke of his faith and the divinity in every soul and the purity of love. And he began his speech with a simple greeting. Sisters and brothers of America. So today, let me say, sisters and brothers of India, my confidence in what our nations can achieve together is rooted in the values that we share. For we may have our different histories and speak different languages. But when we look at each other, we see a reflection of ourselves. Having thrown off colonialism, we created constitutions that began with the three same words. We the people. Together we unlock new discoveries from the particles of creation to outer space. And we are among the few nations to have gone to both the moon and to Mars. In recent years, India has lifted more people out of poverty than any other country. And now we have a historic opportunity with India leading the way to end the injustice of extreme poverty all around the world. America wants to be your partner as you protect the health of your people and the beauty of this land. From the backwaters of Kerala to the banks of Ganga. As, as we deliver more, ener more energy, more electricity, let's do it with clean, renewable energy like solar and wind. And let's put cleaner vehicles on the road and more filtration systems on farms and villages. Because every child should be able to drink clean water and every child should be able to breathe clean air. We need our young people healthy for their futures. And we can do it. We have the technology to do it. It's young people like you who have to speak up so we can protect this planet for your generation. I'll be gone when the worst effects happen. It's your generation and your children that are going to be impacted. And that's why it's urgent that we begin this work right now. Progress ultimately depends on something more basic, and that is how we see each other. We are strongest when we see the inherent dignity in every human being. Look at our countries, the incredible diversity. India is defined by countless languages and dialects in every color and caste and creed, gender and orientations. And likewise in America, we're black and white and Latino and Asian and Indian American and Native American. Your constitution begins with the pledge to uphold the dignity of the individual. And our Declaration of Independence proclaims that all men are created equal. In both our countries, generations have worked to live up to these ideals. My grandfather was a cook for the British Army in Kenya. The distant branches of Michelle's family tree include both slaves and slave owners. When we were born, people who looked like us still couldn't vote in some parts of the country. Even as America has blessed us with extraordinary opportunities, there were moments in my life where I've been treated differently because of the color of my skin. The United States grapple with questions of identity and inequality and how we treat each other, how we deal with diversity of beliefs and of faiths. And so even as we live in a world of terrible inequality, we're also proud to live in countries where even the grandson of a cook can become president. Or even a, a dulit can help write a constitution. And even a tea seller can become prime minister. But, 
The point is, is that the aim of our work must be not to just have a few do well, but to have everybody have a chance. Everybody who's willing to work for it have the ability to dream big and then reach those dreams. Our nations are strongest when we uphold the equality of all our people, and that includes our women. And here in India, it's the wives and the mothers who so often hold families and communities together. Indian women have shown that they can succeed in every field, including government, where many of your leaders are women. And here's what we know. We know from experience that nations are more successful when their women are successful. This is one of the most direct measures of whether a nation is going to develop effectively is how it treats its women. When a girl goes to school, it doesn't just open up her young mind, it benefits all of us because maybe someday she'll start her own business or invent a new technology or cure a disease. And when women are able to work, families are healthier and communities are wealthier and entire countries are more prosperous. And when young women are educated, then their children are gonna be well-educated and have more opportunity. So if nations really want to succeed in today's global economy, they can't simply ignore the talents of half their people. And as husbands and fathers and brothers, we have to step up because every girl's life matters. Every daughter deserves the same chance as our sons. Every woman should be able to go about her day to walk the streets or ride the bus and be safe and be treated with respect and dignity. She deserves that. Our nations are strongest when we see that we are all God's children, all equal in his eyes and worthy of his love. Across our two great countries, we have Hindus and Muslims, Christians and Sikhs and Jews and Buddhists and so many faiths. And we remember the wisdom of Gandhiji, who said, for me, the different religions are beautiful flowers from the same garden, or they are branches of the same majestic tree. The peace we seek in the world begins in human hearts. And it finds its glorious expression when we look beyond any differences in religion or tribe and rejoice in the beauty of every soul. If India, as massive as it is, with so much diversity, so many differences, is able to continually affirm its democracy, that is an example for every other country on earth. That's what makes us world leaders not just the size of our economy or the number of weapons we have, but our ability to show the way in how we work together and how much respect we show each other. Sisters and brothers of India, and we are not perfect countries, and we've known tragedy and we've known triumph. We have many challenges in front of us. But the reason I stand here today and I'm so optimistic about our future together is that despite our imperfections, our two nations possess the keys to progress in the century ahead. We vote in free elections. We work and we build and we innovate. We lift up the least among us. We reach for heights previous generations could not even imagine. We respect human rights and human dignity and it is recorded in our constitutions and we keep striving to live up to those ideals put to paper all those years ago. And our nations will be more secure and the world will be safer and a more just place when our two democracies, the world's largest democracy, and the world's oldest democracy stand together. I believe that. And we do these things because they make our lives better and safer and more prosperous but we also do them because our moral imaginations extend beyond the limits of our own lives. And we believe that the circumstances of our birth need not dictate the arc of our lives. We believe in the father working far from home, sending money back so his family might have a better life. We believe in the mother who goes without so that her children might have something more. We believe in the laborer earning his daily wage and the student pursuing her degree. And we believe in a young boy who knows that if he just keeps studying, if he's just given the chance, his hopes might be realized too. We are all beautiful flowers from the same garden, branches of the same majestic tree. And I'm the first American president to come to your country twice, but I predict I will not be the last because as Americans, we believe in the promise of India. We believe in the people of India. We are proud to be your friend. We are proud to be your partner as you build the country of your dreams. Thank you.
Go ahead.